SEO isn't always easy, and it's often hard to predict when results will kick in. You can sometimes be looking at 6 to 12 months before seeing the results of your hard work. In this video, I'll be breaking down 9 SEO quick wins that you can jump on to get quick results. Before we carry on, if you find this video useful, please subscribe to the channel and I'll be sure to bring you more useful videos in the future. Tip number one is do the basics. Now, I know this sounds obvious, but please bear with me. A lot of people skip this. A lot of people are so focused on the next advanced tactic or buzzword like core web vitals that they just neglect the basics. You should be thinking about the basics like title tags, header tags, internal links, content quality and so on. So how do you get quick wins from SEO basics? Well, it could be as simple as just starting a crawl with something like Sitebolt. Run a crawl with Sitebolt and then look at the internal URLs only and make sure that you have the columns selected for title tags, H1s and meta descriptions. You then have a choice. You can export these to Excel or Sheets or you can do the filtering from within the crawler. You then have to start to filter by your priority pages. For example, if it's an e-commerce site, that might be categories and subcategories. And filtering by these would just make it easier to scan and look at the title tags and H1 so you can look for the poorly optimized ones. And I know scanning them manually doesn't sound very technical or advanced, but I did say we're talking about the basics here. You can easily find some quick wins just from doing this. So what about quick wins with content quality? Now you could just start by comparing your priority content to what's already ranking on page one. Is your content good or preferably better than that that's already ranking on page one? And if not, why not? Don't settle for mediocre content. Aim for something that's better than everyone else on page one. Another quick way to assess your content quality is using a tool like Surfer. You can run quick content audits on ranking pages for your selected terms to see how well your competitors are optimized. You can then use Surfer's content editor to optimize your own content. Surfer uses data from Google's natural language API and then it combines it with data from the ranking pages for a given term. Surfer then makes suggestions about terms to use or write about and headings to include, how long the content should be and so on. So in this example, the content could possibly do with being a bit longer and more in depth. And there's also a huge number of terms such as smart wallet, digital art, gas fees, and loads of others that an article like this should probably be mentioning. So even if you only use a tool like this as a guide, it can be useful to help ensure you're covering the topic as a whole. Tip number two is low hanging fruit. Again, I know this may seem quite obvious, but so many people don't know what to do with their low hanging fruit opportunities. For those who don't know, low hanging fruit terms are basically terms that you're ranking for in positions four to 20. So just a small bump in those positions could give you some quick wins. I like to look at positions four to 30 because I think those page three terms are still great opportunities to look at. So how do we find these opportunities? The easiest way to find these is using your rank tracker. In this example, I'm gonna use Rank Caddy because there's a one click option for these in there. Go to your project in Rank Caddy you can then find the low hanging fruit opportunities in two ways. The first is to click on the show more stats tab and just click on the low hanging fruit option. The second option is to go down to the rankings table and choose low hanging fruit in the opportunities drop down. This will filter by keywords ranking between positions four and 30. So you have your low hanging fruit opportunities, but now what? And this is where many people just stop. There are a number of things you could do here. So let's just look at a couple of examples. One is improve on-page optimization and internal linking. You've already looked at optimizing the basics. Well, this is a good way to find some high priority opportunities to work on. Look at things like title tags, header tags, meta descriptions, internal links. Could these be improved enough just to give you that little bump you need into those key positions? And the second example is improve the content. And be honest here, is your content as good, if not better, than everything else that's on page one? And if not, make it great. Look at what other ranking pages are doing. Look at what topics and subtopics they're covering. Look at what media they're using. And is the intent right? And this is a really important one. There's no point in trying to rank an e-commerce product page on page one of Google if everything else on page one is a long informative article. Tip number three is update old content. SEOs often get caught up in the idea of just creating new content and new content ideas, but what about what's already there? Is it performing? And if not, why not? There's a huge opportunity here to get more value from the older evergreen content on your site. So how do you find these opportunities and what do you do with them? If you haven't already run a content audit, now may be the time, but 
If you're just looking for some quick opportunities, and this video is about quick wins after all, then head on over to Google Analytics or the data dive area of Rank Caddy. Order your pages by traffic or clicks, and you want to have an idea of what the range is in terms of traffic and clicks. You want to ignore the top traffic driving pages for now. The lower level of this filter would depend on your metrics. So for example, if you have 10,000 pages with one click, you'll want to ignore these for now. Narrow it down to the pages that are getting some clicks but aren't top performers. So look for a range that looks like an opportunity. You don't want a list of thousands of pages to deal with, so try to narrow it down to a manageable number. And remember, some of these pages are going to be irrelevant, outdated, and just a waste of time, so you'll be ditching some of them from the final list anyway. So you have your list. Now what do you do with it? How do you improve the content that is in that list? The free method is to start in the SERPs. Look at page one of Google for the main term you're optimizing for. Look at the ranking pages and look at what they're doing. Look at the subheadings and what they're covering. Look at the length of their content, how in-depth it is and the intent. You need to replicate this approach and improve further. The non-free version is to get the help of a content optimization tool like Surfer. As already mentioned, Surfer makes suggestions about terms to use and write about and headings to include, how long content should be, and so on. Now, I'm not saying you should rely solely on tools, but using a tool like this can help guide your writing and make sure you're covering all the topics and subtopics that you should be. So pop your keyword into Surfer's content editor and run the report. It might take a minute or so to run, but when it's ready, you can then click through to report and paste your existing content into that editor. What score does your content get? How far off the recommended content length are you? How many terms are recommended that you're just not mentioning in your content? Tip number four is trim the fat. Do you have waste pages on your site that just drive little or no traffic? Sometimes having too much wastage on your site can send search engines down a rabbit hole you just don't want them to go down. Rather than focusing on your important pages, they may be crawling hundreds or even thousands of irrelevant, outdated content. So how do we find these waste pages? I find the easiest way is using Sitebolt. Run a crawl using Sitebolt and make sure you connect your Google Search Console in the crawl setup. Once the crawl's finished, go to Search Traffic. You can then click on the pages that have no traffic and you can view or export these. Look for waste pages. Which pages are irrelevant or outdated and which have potential and could be improved? So what do you do about these waste pages? For pages that are irrelevant or outdated, you may want to remove them and 301 redirect them to a relevant piece of content, or you may just want to let them 404. If they have external links, you may want to opt for a 301 redirect rather than a 404 so you can retain some of that link equity. And if they have internal links, make sure you remove them. You could also give these old pages a 410 status rather than a 404 to mark them as gone. And this tells search engines that these pages have been removed and they're not coming back. Tip number five is stealing featured snippets. Featured snippets are those excerpts of text that you find at the top of Google results pages. These are sometimes referred to as position zero. So how do you find these featured snippet opportunities? Before you actually win the featured snippet, you need to find the opportunities that you can realistically go after. So here's what you need to do. First of all, look for keywords where the SERP actually has a featured snippet already. Then you need to look for those terms where you're already ranking on page one, and then optimize your page for the featured snippet. Focusing on the opportunities where you're already ranking on page one will give you a much better chance of ranking for that snippet. Now, finding all these opportunities might seem like a lot of manual work, but this is actually something you can do with a couple of clicks in Rank Caddy. Go to your project and scroll down to the rankings table. Click on the opportunities dropdown and select featured snippets and then hit enter or click on the search icon. And that's it. You now have a list of opportunities where you have the best chance of taking that existing featured snippet spot. Tip number six is fix keyword cannibalization issues. Keyword cannibalization is when multiple pages on your website are trying to rank for the same term. And when this happens, search engines like Google can get confused and not know which page to rank. This can result in the wrong pages being ranked or worse, all of those competing pages being dragged down the search results. To find these issues, you ideally want to look at the top 100 search results and then look for two or more URLs from your website that are competing for the same term. Doing this manually just isn't practical, so you'll want to find a tool that properly checks for keyword cannibalization issues. Rank Caddy does this by default, so I'm gonna show you how to find these issues in just a couple of simple steps. So in your Rank Caddy project, scroll down to your rankings table and filter by conflicts only. A new column will appear with the last conflict dates. 
So click on the binoculars next to one of these last conflict dates and look at the conflict graphed over time. You can then start digging into what pages are being conflicting, how much and when. In this example, two pages have been conflicting and bouncing in and out of the rankings. And you can also see that they're both struggling to rank for this term. So fixing this issue could be a quick win for this page. So how do you fix these issues? Now, there's a number of potential causes and fixes for keyword cannibalization. But first, you need to decide which page should be ranking. You then need to consider what the right fix might be. The first fix is merge and redirect. Are all of these pages necessary? If not, you might actually be able to redirect the unwanted pages to the correct one. If removing these other pages isn't necessarily an option, but you don't really need them to rank, then canonical tags could also be an option. The next fix is amend content. All pages on your site should be unique. You shouldn't have pages optimised for the same term. So it may just be a case that some of these other pages should be optimised for a different term. So have a look at those other pages and look at the title tags, the content, and see if you can amend those so that they're optimised for the terms that they should be and you might be able to avoid conflict in that way. The next fix is fixing anchor text conflict. Having the same or similar anchor text pointing to different pages can be another confusing signal that can cause cannibalization. Twilu is a great tool for finding internal anchor issues that could be causing page conflict. Use the anchors feature for analyzing all of the anchor text in use throughout the site and for finding these potential issues. The next fix is improve your backlink profile. As well as internal link anchors potentially causing conflict, this can also be the case with backlink anchors as well. So check your backlinks for these pages and look for any potentially conflicting anchors within those backlinks. This is an example of a cannibalization issue that I resolved for a search term with 100,000 searches a month. And it wasn't just this one term that was helped by fixing the issue. Tip number seven is use Search Console data. Google Search Console is a gold mine of data, but so many people just don't know how to make the most of it. So how can we get some quick wins using Search Console? First of all, look at what terms are driving impressions. Now this may sound basic, but doing something as simple as this can unearth loads of opportunities. Finding terms you weren't aware of or hadn't thought of might result in opportunities to expand on or amend existing content. Doing this could potentially drive those pages more long tail traffic or organic traffic in general. You can use filters in Search Console to find these opportunities, but Rank Caddy's Data Dive feature makes viewing this so much easier. So let's have a look in Data Dive. In this example, we've already selected the High Impressions Low CTR filter. We're then going to click on the binoculars to look at the keywords for the mugs page. We can now see the terms driving this page impressions and clicks. We can quickly see terms that we may not have thought about like dog breed mug or ceramic dog mug. We can now also click on the run report option against terms that grab our interest to see where the term is currently mentioned. There are loads of opportunities tucked away in Search Console so start getting into a routine of digging into this data. Tip number eight is low CTR pages. Looking at pages with low click-through rate is another potential big win. If we look at pages that are already ranking or driving impressions, but they have a low CTR, all we have to do is improve the CTR of those pages to potentially see some wins in terms of traffic. But why would your page have low CTR? It may be that you need to improve the title tag, the meta description, maybe the wrong page is ranking, maybe you need to look for keyword cannibalization issues. These are all things that you can think about when you're looking to make quick improvements to improve your page's CTR. So how do you find these opportunities? There are loads of variations when it comes to finding these sorts of opportunities. You can find these in Search Console, but you don't get URLs and terms in one view. So it's often difficult to look at these in one go. In Rank Caddy's Data Dive, it's easy to see URLs and terms in one view. And you also get things like low click-through rate opportunities within the preset filters. And within those preset filters, there's other variations you could look at as well. So for example, high converting, high clicks. So there could be an opportunity to drive more revenue here. We've also got high converting, low clicks. So why do these have low clicks? We know they convert, so could we drive more revenue to these? And we've also got low converting, high clicks. So we could look at why are these low converting? Is there an opportunity to do some conversion rate optimization work here perhaps and improve conversions? The ninth and final tip is internal linking. Internal linking is one of those things that's often overlooked, but it's so important for SEO. It's a good idea to improve internal linking overall and improving things like your navigation structure can help too. But this video is about quick wins. So let's start with those. 
The first one is low hanging fruit. Start by improving your internal linking for your low hanging fruit pages for an easy quick win. The next one is link from authority pages. Getting links from pages with an existing backlink profile could pass some of that power onto your target page. But if you're going to do this, just make sure that those pages you're linking from are relevant. Next up is check anchor text. As well as looking at anchor text to avoid conflict issues, there's also an opportunity to improve these, especially if you have uninformative anchors like click here or read more. And then finally, we have internal linking anomalies. And this is basically looking at anomalies in the linking numbers to and from pages. So for example, are there potentially important pages with only one or two internal links pointing to them? And if so, improve these by looking for relevant opportunities to internally link. And one bonus internal linking tip, every time you add a new piece of content, look for internal pages to link to, but also look for pages to link from. And that's it. If at least one of these nine tips doesn't start driving your results, then there may be bigger issues at play with your website but hopefully not. Hopefully you can implement some of these and start seeing some huge wins.